Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day today. Today, I'm stoked to share with you another new synth that's gonna be on our store on waproduction.com, DRC, from our friends at Imaginando. So DRC is modeled after analog synths, but obviously created in a digital way, but it takes a lot of its learnings from those analog synths and the way that it's designed, the way that it sounds, and just kind of the infrastructure behind it. What's also really amazing about this plugin is that when you purchase it, you also get access to not only the Windows and Mac VST versions of it, you also get access to it on your iPad, iPhone, or Android device. And so there's a lot of really awesome benefits to that. Firstly, the plugin, as you'll see, is really designed for touch sensitive controls and super simplified in that sense while giving you still a ton of control. But what's really awesome is that you can take your saved presets from your iPad to your computer, to your Android device, and in reverse as well. And you can save everything to the cloud so that you can start on one device and pick up on the next. So if you like to produce on the go or create sounds on the go, on the train, on the bus, on the plane, whatever, you can then save those to the cloud and pick up right where you left off when you come into the studio. So I'm gonna go over the general aspects of the plugin, how it works, all the parameters, that sort of thing. But I'm gonna start by showing you how it sounds. So let's listen to some of the presets. Okay, so now let's get into how the plugin works and the basic settings and different windows and all of that. So I'm gonna start in the settings of the plugin. So you've got some general settings here I won't get too into detail with. Uh, you can adjust the voices, knob sensitivity, which is really helpful if you're on a touch device, um, all that sort of thing. But down here, you can really adjust how it looks. So if it's daytime, we can turn on day mode, which basically is a bright uh, white background version. And you can adjust the color scheme. So if you prefer a different color, you can do that. I'm gonna switch back to night mode. So in case you guys are watching at night, it doesn't hurt your eyes, but I'm gonna pick red. Let's go with that. So pretty cool little customization there. So coming back into the plugin now, it's gonna look pretty familiar to those of you who've used other synths before. There's a lot of similar controls, but some things are set up a bit differently and worded a bit differently than you might be used to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start down here with the piano. Um, basically, you can see the keys as you would in many other plugins. But there's some cool things you can do here uh, that you can't do in most plugins. So firstly, you can adjust how much of the keyboard you can see. So that's pretty handy if you're trying to play across a larger span across the octaves. You can also go into the settings down here and you can adjust which scale shows up on the keyboard. Now that's really awesome. So let's say you wanna be in a G Lydian scale and now you'll see that the keys down here have changed and only the keys found in the scale are showing up. So it makes it really easy to play along with a song if you aren't super skilled with knowing your music theory and, and which keys are in what song and, and that sort of thing. So now I know that any note that I press that's visible on the screen will be in my scale. Oops, I played an F, which is not in this scale, so it didn't light up. F sharp is the correct note. Cool, so that's really helpful. Um, I totally will be using that in my own work. Um, and then you can even make a custom scale. So if you don't happen to know the scale of the song you're working on, you can even just plug in the notes that are already in the song. So it's like, all right, I already built these chords. I know they sound good. I don't wanna figure out what scale they're in, what key they're in. I can just, but I know there's a C sharp, there's a D, there's an F, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you can plug those in so that now you're just playing along with the chords you already made 
and you can't make a mistake basically. So that's pretty cool. In this same menu, you can adjust what the mod wheel does, um, how it affects cutoff, resonance, the rate of your LFOs, um, and these other filter mod modifications and things like that, transposition. So you can really adjust the mod wheel, which I'm moving now, as you can see, you can adjust that uh, to control kind of whatever combination of effects that you would like. Um, you can adjust how the aftertouch affects it. So that's, um, that's super helpful as well. And then also how the pitch bend works. Is it affecting both oscillators? Does it affect the filter? And what's the range of how much it moves? So if you want it to go two octaves, you can do that or, uh, you know, have it only move by three semitones. So pretty useful settings here. Coming back into the main window, there's even an entirely different view mode that skips over the keyboard and it's called the honeycomb essentially. And what you can do is just click and it'll play a chord. And you can adjust kind of how it behaves here. So this is a really useful plugin for those who aren't necessarily experts with music theory. It gives you a lot of fun tools to play around with. All right, so now coming back to our default patch here, um, there's some general settings at the top. You can turn on MIDI Learn so that you can adjust whichever parameter using a knob on your keyboard or controller. Um, you can, these will probably be turned off if you're in a DAW, but if you're using it on your iPad or whatever, there are different settings that you can set. You can adjust the tempo and the clock source. Um, and then down here, we get into the basics of the plugin. So first you have oscillator one and oscillator two. So you can adjust the waveform, the octave. And then you've got some additional settings if you choose a square wave, which can control the pulse width, an LFO that affects the pulse width, and an envelope that, uh, that affects the pulse width. You can decide which LFO affects the pulse width, and same with the which envelope. So those are down here, e.g. is envelope generator, and these are your two envelopes and two LFOs. So you can adjust those accordingly. Uh, oscillator two is slightly different and this is our mixer down here. So I'm going to turn it up so you can actually hear oscillator two. So if we, uh, it's, it's got some additional settings like this fine setting, so you can, uh, have it be slightly tuned differently as well as the semitone setting, which can have it, you know, be tuned by several semitones differently. <laughs> And then you've got the sync option, which syncs the phase uh, of the oscillators, uh, giving it an interesting effect. So some fun stuff you can play around with there. Okay. And then uh, getting into this one, this is the sub and noise oscillator. So uh, you can also control those, uh, the volume of those down here. Um, we can pull in a sub oscillator. Control which octave they're at, what waveform it is. Also the bandwidth of the noise. So let's turn up the noise. Cool. So we've got that going. Um, over here, you've got the modulators. Uh, so you can decide how the LFOs and envelopes affect the oscillators. Um, source one can be an LFO, LFO one, envelope one, or both and you can decide the range and the amount that they affect each of these oscillators. And then the same on this side. Cool. So, we could uh, fine tune that a bit more, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. 
Um, coming over here to the uh, performance tab. So that is how you go from polyphonic, monophonic, and unison. And you can transpose the sound there. I'm going to put it monophonic. And you can turn on or off portamento. Uh, have the glide time adjust here. You can turn on legato. Cool. So moving on to the filter section, you can adjust the filter and the, you can set either envelope generator 2 or LFO 2 to adjust the filter. So we can set it here. You can change the mode of the filter. There's low pass filters with different uh, different slopes. There's band pass filter, high pass and notch. So you can, you know, adjust the LFO, which we've now turned on to to affect the cutoff here. And you can adjust the settings for that. And so there's all sorts of settings for the LFOs, uh, phase mode, phase offset, uh, delay, what waveform the LFO is. And uh, all sorts of settings for both these LFOs and same with the envelope generators. Uh, you can adjust the attack, decay, sustain and release. Uh, you can change it. You can flip it so that they kind of inverse each other. Uh, so if you want the attack to go down instead, vice versa, you can flip that um, and adjust those here. Um, so some really cool tools you can use. And that's only available on the second envelope generator. Um, but yeah, some really awesome effects and features that you can use that not every plugin has. So moving over to the modulators, you can affect how these different features affect the filter. So you can have LFO1 modulate the filter frequency. All of these modulate the filter frequency except for velocity, which um, you know affects the how hard it's being pressed. Keyboard tracking, uh, noise oscillator, all sorts of stuff that you can adjust here. And then you've also got the uh, voltage controlled amplitude, which is uh, similar. It basically controls. This is this is another feature that is very based on analog processing. Uh, so it it basically controls the amplitude being sent. Uh, via these different parameters. So yeah, you can really play around with those and see what sounds good to you. So I reset my sound just because it was getting a little crazy there, but jumping down into the mixer, uh, we already talked about uh, the amplitude options for master. Uh, you can also set the pregain that goes into the output, the amplitude for the oscillator one and two, as well as the sub and noise oscillators. And then uh, there's also the ring modulation feature as well down here. Which is also pretty cool. So uh, next you have some simple stuff uh, that comes in most plugins. You've got the delay. Uh, you can set it to sync with the rate of the project. So you can create some pretty interesting effects that way. And then we can turn on reverb as well. So definitely some uh, some crazy stuff you can you can create with this guy. And then uh, chorus effect as well to add some width there as well. delay is getting a little out of hand let's turn that down a bit um, and then uh, jumping over here we've already gone over the envelopes as well as the LFOs 
And then finally, you also have an arpeggiator. So if we turn that on, it might sound a little crazy with this sound in particular, but let's try it. Uh, you can adjust the gate. So that's fun to play with as well. So yeah, generally, I think that this plugin uh, can help you create some really interesting analog-esque sounds, uh, especially if you are interested in kind of really diving into sound design. It comes with a bunch of great presets, but you can really let your creativity run wild with this one. I think this plugin is particularly for people who like to produce on the go or create sounds while they're on public transportation, things like that, because of that ability to sync your sounds with your iPad, your tablet, your iPhone, whatever, uh, with with your DAW, with the plugin in your DAW on your computer. So that's a really awesome feature, um, as well as the tactile controls that you can use on an iPad or an Android tablet. Um, so the, there's a lot, it's really designed to be simple for you to use in that way, but also still get the full capabilities. The synth, synth engine is exactly the same on all the platforms. And so you can create the same exact sounds wherever you are and whichever device you're using. So Hope you guys found this video helpful. I think that this tool can be really helpful for a lot of producers out there. You can create some really interesting and unique sounds. And sometimes all you need is that new tool to give you that inspiration. So go out and get it. This is DRC from Imaginando, our friends over there. And we're really excited to have it on the WA Production Store now. So go check it out. Have a great day, guys.